Welcome to the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. My name is Leon. Let's do a test comparing a fast flow rate versus a slow flow rate on vacuum resonant fusion and see if the fast one causes us problems. Back when I was having trouble getting a good surface finish on my parts, I had a lot of comments saying that my flow rate was too fast. And so I took that to heart and I did what I could to slow down the flow rate. In fact, I changed up the flow media in order to help reduce the flow rate. I got better clamps to help me reduce the flow rate. And so I started slowing down my flow rate and I was doing about a half an inch per minute across my parts. And I started getting some pretty good finish on my parts. But I got to wondering over time, is that really my issue? Can I get good mold surfaces if I flow faster? So I decided to finally go ahead and do a test to find out. So in this video, I'm gonna prepare two layups. One, I will do my traditional flow rate, which is about a half inch per minute. And the other one, I'm gonna release the clamp on it and just let it go as fast as it can go. And then we, everything else, I'll try to be exactly the same. So the same vacuum pressure, same epoxy, same temperature. I'm gonna do them at the same time in the same setup. So the only thing that should be different would be the flow rate. Well, let me talk a little bit about what my layup is going to be. So I'm going to set up two separate samples. They'll each have their own vacuum bag and tacky tape. So the only place we can have a cross vacuum situation will be on the outlet. They'll have the same exact vacuum out at the outlet. So it's going to be a carbon fiber foam, carbon fiber sandwich layup. The mold side is going to be 100 gram per square meter biaxial carbon fiber fabric. The model number on that is F4202, and I got it from Composite Envisions. I'll put a link to Composite Envisions down in the description. For the core of the layup, I'm using the Venicel H80, which is about five pounds per cubic foot foam. It's 1 8 inch thick. I put my own holes into the foam. They are one inch apart in a square pattern, and the holes are 1 8 inch diameter. Actually, they're a little bit less than that. They're close to a hundred thousandths of an inch. The vacuum side carbon fiber is, again, the same thing I had on the mold side. 100 gram per square inch biaxial. I then put down a peel ply. As you can see, the peel ply is green. That means that it has a release agent on it. And that helps it separate from the part a little bit easier than the white peel ply does. On these thin parts with just a really thin carbon fiber sheet on it, that's really a good way to go because you don't want to... <laughs> because as you're pulling the peel ply off, you don't want to separate the face from the core. The next layer is a flow media. Now this is not a traditional flow media. This is one that I got from Harbor Freight. It's used as a mesh tarp and it's also used as shade cloth. I found out that it does a pretty good job of restricting the flow just enough to give me my good mold finishes. And then on top of that, at least this time, I'm using a slightly stretchy vacuum bagging film. It's really thin. So I'm a little concerned it's easy to uh, get punctures in it, but so far I've used it twice and it's worked out okay. I'll put a link up here in the upper left-hand corner that's a link to a video where I finally got a good surface on my mold side of my parts. I go into a little better explanation in that video of what my process is, although it has changed just a little bit since I did that one, but essentially it's the same. What you'll see next is a little more description of what's going to happen when I first start the flow. But then we'll go into time lapse and you'll be able to see how fast the fast side is versus the slow side. And I've got cameras looking at both the top and the bottom of the part so you can see how the difference is between the top and the bottom. And then at the end we'll talk about what the results are. To help me remember which side I had the fast flow on and which side I had the slow flow on, I'm writing slow on the left side and fast on the right side on top of my vacuum bag. When I go to take off my vacuum bag, then I'll transfer that information down to the part. I'm removing the clamp from the input line, the line that connects to the mixing cup, because I'm not going to need it again until the very end when I want to pull excess epoxy from the input side using the bypass line. The epoxy can now get to the slow side clamp and the fast side clamp. I decided to set up the flow rate I want on the slow side first. It usually takes me a few minutes to try to get that set up properly. I usually end up having it come in a little bit too fast and I have to close it down a little bit like I am right here. And I have that marker in my right hand and what I do is every 60 seconds I mark where the flow front is. 
And then what I'm trying to do is to get the epoxy to advance about a half an inch every minute. That's a rate that works out pretty well. So I get across a 12 inch wide part a little bit before I start getting close to the tacky time or the pot life of the epoxy. It takes me a couple minutes to get the flow right set up right on this slow side. So let me jump ahead a little bit right to when I'm ready to take off the clamp on the fast side. Let's take a quick look at the bottom and see what it looks like on the slow side. And now let's go back up the top side and get this thing started. I'm removing the clamp on the fast side and I'm completely removing it, not putting any impediment at all and we're just going to let that thing flow. <laughs> and as you can see, it's flowing pretty fast. Now it's going to take a little while for this flow across and I don't really have much to say while it's flowing. So I'm going to speed this up and let's just let her crank along. Occasionally, I'll look at the bottom side so we can kind of compare the top side and bottom side. Well, the fast side appears to be finished on both the top and the bottom. It took about 14 minutes. We started at 5 minutes and finished at 19 minutes. And it really flowed fast, except there toward the end it did start slowing down, which is fairly typical. It certainly went way faster than the slow side. And I've even increased the flow on the slow side a couple of times because as it got closer to the end it started slowing down. So I'd open up the clamp just a little bit more and let more epoxy in. You can see I put a clamp on the fast side to uh, clamp off that epoxy, but then I decided I'm not going to do that. I, I took it back off again because I decided that in the real world, if I end up using this fast flow method, if it gives me a good enough surface finish, what I'll end up doing is letting the epoxy flow through as fast as it can, and then I'm going to leave the clamp off until I'm starting to get close to the gel time. And then what I'll end up doing is I will put a clamp on the mixing cup side and use the bypass line to suck out excess epoxy. So I took it back off and just left it off until the end. It's going to take a few more minutes for the slow side to finish so let's pick up the pace again until the end. At this point, the part is fully infused, but if I were in a normal situation where I couldn't see through my mold, I wouldn't know if I was fully infused yet. So I decided to go ahead and just let it set until I was starting to get closer to the gel time. In this case, I chose 35 minutes on the clock. I probably kind of gone up to 45 minutes without any trouble. And then I pulled off all the clamps except for the clamp to the mixing cup so that I could start pulling epoxy out from the input side. I then left the vacuum to run overnight. Let's see. Well, I let the part run overnight. It was about 70 degrees, so I really needed around 24 hours to let this fully cure. I pulled the vacuum off after about 12 hours, and then I just let it set at room temperature, and then after another 12 hours, I went and pulled off the vacuum bag. And I am really surprised at the results. Now let's look at the slow flow side. I'll try to get a good picture of it. I've marked what the direction of flow was so that I could take a look at this and see if there's any difference between the input side and output side. Now I have to say, I am extremely happy with this surface finish. 
there are just a few pinholes, but just a few. This is a really a pretty good finish. I think I know why, but uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Now let's talk about the fast flow side. It is surprisingly good. Given how many comments I had that my flow was too fast, I thought, you know, just letting this thing fly through there with a fast flow, I would probably have lots of problems. Now there might be just a few more pinholes, maybe, but by golly, it uh, looks really, really good. There might be just a tiny bit more pinholes than the other one, but it looks fantastic. I would definitely use it. That really surprised me. The fast flow looks pretty much as good as the slow flow. Now I do want to be careful and put a little qualification in there. That is with this particular setup. I'm guessing that with a different flow media, I could get different results. Particularly with the more traditional flow media where it's much more open and epoxy can go much faster through the part. In that case, I might not get as good a result. I may have to go through and try to test that. But I do have an issue. And I noticed it when I came in to turn off the vacuum pump. You may or may not know, but on these two-stage vacuum pumps, on the exhaust port, if you see like a very faint fog coming out of it, it means you've got a leak somewhere. And I noticed that I had that. That means that sometime overnight while I had the vacuum pump, I got a leak somewhere because I did not have that leak within oh, about an hour after I had finished the infusion. So sometime between an hour after and 12 hours after, we got a leak. I looked at the vacuum gauge. It, it wasn't a big leak, at least not at my resin trap. I hadn't lost much vacuum, maybe about an inch of mercury, but there was definitely a leak. I decided to ignore it and we'd just see what happened. I weighed my two parts and I can definitely see that I had a leak. On the slow flow side, I had 57.7 grams. On the fast flow side, I had 64.4. I think that indicates that I had a leak over on this part that was the slow flow. And I think I had a, just a little bit of a pressure difference over here on the fast flow too, because on a good part, using the, pretty much the same exact setup, I have about a 50 gram weight. So this one's about 14 grams heavier than it should be, and, and this is another 10 grams heavier. And that could also influence how good a surface finish I got. I've had a couple previous vacuum failures also, and I've, no I've noticed that when you have a vacuum failure, you have much more fill, a better surface finish, over here on the mold side, as long as that vacuum failure is in a hose that's leading directly out to the exit. If it's in the vacuum bag itself, of course, you're gonna have some issues. But I don't think this was in the vacuum bag itself. I think this is somewhere in the joints on my hoses. <laughs> because of my vacuum leak, I can't say definitively that this fast infusion is just as good as slow infusion, but I think this test indicates that it probably is. I'll really have to do another test. So for the next samples that I'm going to make, I'm only going to do fast flow and we'll see how well it works. I'll probably do three samples. So if my next samples turn out good, I'll probably keep using fast flow at least until I find some evidence that it can have problems. And I'm guessing that would probably only occur with a different flow media. I want to thank my patrons, Keith and Richard for being fantastic supporters of the channel. And it looks like it's going to be time to do a t-shirt giveaway. So the next video, we'll announce the, the t-shirt giveaway and talk about what the rules are and how to qualify. See you next time.